Hello class 10. Let's start with this topic, okay, which is uh, specific resistance or resistivity we discussed about in the last video. Okay, but first uh, let's give a look at this. That is the unit of resistance is ohm. It's called ohm after the name of a person of course and it's denoted by a Greek letter omega. This is the symbol omega but it denotes the unit of resistance here remember. Likewise unit of potential difference is volt which is denoted by a capital V. So wherever you see capital V in electricity you have to understand it's volt. And the unit of resistivity which is this rho we are going to talk about is ohm meter we'll see that okay or it could also be ohm centimeter ohm meter is that in SR okay so let's start with this this is the relation that we got after looking at the factors affecting resistance of a conductor and we saw that the resistance is rho L by A where rho depends on the material of the conductor mind you and it is called the specific resistance or the resistivity of the conductor now in this expression for resistivity, if you take the area of the conductor to be unity, depending on whichever system of unity you are working on, if it is SI, the area has to be 1 meter squared, if it is CGS, it has to be 1 centimeter squared, of course, don't forget, so it depends on what unit you are working in. And the length is also unity, if it's SI, length has to be 1 meter, if it's CGS, the length has to be 1 centimeter, don't forget. So if both the area and the length they are unity then we see that rho becomes equal to r and thereby we define specific resistance or resistivity to be the resistance of a conductor having unit length and unit cross-sectional area remember that we have spoken about uh, specific resistance in class 9 also so this is only a revision for you all, okay? So mind you, this tells us that if I have two conductors, okay, uh, cut out from the same metal piece, say for example both are iron, one is a longer, one, one has a longer length or you know bigger area, the other has a different length and different area. Now both of these two conductors, all right, they will have different resistances of course why because they have different length and different area but since they are cut out of the same metal piece or they are made up of the same material irrespective of their different lengths and different areas they will have the same specific resistance or resistivity remember that all right so that is about you know resistivity and specific resistance so to say let me erase this now. You can pause the video and copy this. Okay. Let us now discuss something important which is called Ohm's law. Do not forget the units. Do not forget the units and do not forget the definition. So let us discuss about Ohm's law. So what Ohm's law tells us is, if we have a conductor, say a wire, this point A, this point B, the potential of point A is VA and the potential of point B is VB. So what is the potential difference between point A and point B? The potential difference is VA minus VB. So the very first thing that Ohm's law tells us is that, Whenever there is a difference in potential between two points, two different points, and you connect these two points by a wire or using whatever conductor. So whenever these, there is a potential difference between two points and these two points are connected using a conductor, then what happens is there is a flow of current from a higher potential, let us consider VA to be greater than VB. So there is a flow of current from the higher potential to the lower potential. This is what Ohm's law tells us. It tells us, but of course I forgot to tell you, there are certain conditions necessary and those conditions are 
temperature and some other physical conditions that they need to remain constant. So temperature and other physical conditions remaining same, the current flowing through a conductor, it says is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends. So to say whenever there is a potential difference, there is current flowing. If no potential difference, no current flowing. And greater the potential difference of course, greater is the current flowing. That is what you know Ohm's law tells us. So it tells us temperature and some other physical conditions remaining the same. The current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends. So if I is the current flowing, then I as you can see is directly proportional to the potential difference between these two points. So let us first you know, derive the mathematical form of it, of Ohm's law that is. If we write Va minus Vb to be V simply, then V is proportional to I, where V of course don't forget is Va minus Vb. Now a proportional to sign can always be replaced by an equal to sign provided we add some constant and the constant over here is R. Or we rather write this as V is equal to I into R, where R is the resistance of the conductor. So this is the mathematical form for your Ohm's law. Alright, uh, let me get a piece of chalk. So this is the mathematical form for your Ohm's law and if you are asked the uh, statement for Ohm's law then what you will write is, let me write it over here, temperature and other physical conditions, physical conditions remaining same, remaining same, the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional is directly proportional proportional okay now where do I write proportional to the potential difference across its ends okay I hope you can read anyway I'm reading it out for you all so what I've written is temperature and other physical conditions remaining same the current flowing through a conductor is directly proportional to the potential difference across its ends e n d s ends so this is the statement for your Ohm's law all right now this relation tells us that V is directly proportional to I. Now whenever you plot the graph for a directly proportional relation, okay, so what I'm doing here is I'm plotting I versus V. Then what we will get is you will get a straight line passing through the origin like this. So this is your graph for Ohm's law. You know, any any two quantities, if A is directly proportional to B and you plot a graph between A and B, it will be a straight line like this. Okay, so a directly proportional graph is always like this. You need to understand that clearly. Alright, so this is your graph for Ohm's law. If you have to draw a graph between potential difference and current, that is for Ohm's law, you have to draw this. Now let us now try understanding what the statement is saying. We have seen that resistance of a conductor depends on uh, temperature and of course there are other factors too we are going to discuss that and here we have considered R to be a constant. So we are saying if temperature and some of the physical conditions remaining same so to say only then R will be a constant that is what we are indirectly say indirectly implying okay because r is a constant over here 
and we know if temperature changes then temperature is I mean then resistance is not going to remain a constant therefore for this to be true the resistance to be a constant temperature has to remain same all right and other physical conditions are like the density the pressure including the length of the conductor and the cross-sectional area of the conductor too so this is the length of the conductor the cross-sectional area is this remember because we know resistance also depends on the length of the conductor and the cross-sectional area of the conductor too so this other physical conditions also includes the length of the conductor and the cross-sectional area of the conductor also remember because if temperature length cross-sectional area they are not constants then this equation is not valid because resistance in that case will not be a constant and here we replace the proportional design by equal to provided we add some constant so r is the resistance here okay and r we consider it to be a constant simply because temperature and other physical conditions like the length and the area of the conductor they are constants Okay, so this is all that you need to remember about Ohm's law. This graph, the statement of course, uh, and the equation for Ohm's law. V is IR, where V is the potential difference between the two ends, remember that. Now, after we've understood Ohm's law, let me keep that graph for now, except let me erase this. Let us talk about something called ohmic devices and non ohmic devices. What are ohmic devices? Devices or electrical components which obeys Ohm's law, or for that matter, this graph, the graph of potential and current being a straight line okay any device that obeys this graph or so to say obeys ohm's law is what is called uh, is what is called ohmic devices like any conductor any metal any metal all right and there are something called non ohmic devices you can give the name of any metal okay so non ohmic devices you will be asked what are ohmic devices? What are non ohmic devices? Okay, you have to answer that. Non ohmic devices are devices which do not obey Ohm's law, of course. Like, for example, semiconductor diodes. Semiconductor diodes, you can write transistors. You can write LEDs also, okay, LED bulb, LED television, alright, LEDs actually are semiconductor diodes, okay, this, the full form is light emitting, D stands for diode, alright, but still you can include this here, non ohmic devices, because for these devices, the relation between, or the graph between velocity and current will not be a straight line, Okay, it will be some kind of a curve, something like this. Okay, so they are not obeying, so to say, Ohm's law. Thereby, they are called non ohmic devices. Remember that. So, I think, uh, oh, by the way, I was about to end the video. Can I erase this class 10? You can pause the video. And if you want to copy anything, you can copy that. Okay, so let me erase this. Uh, we learnt about resistivity and the inverse of resistivity or the reciprocal of resistivity so to say is what is called conductivity it's called conductivity and it's denoted by another Greek letter which is called a sigma now since the unit of resistivity was ohm meter unit of resistivity was ohm meter because don't forget resistivity is what resistance a by 
L. All right. So you can see it is ohm meter squared divided by meter. So one meter and the meter in the denominator and one meter over here cancels. So it becomes or divides each other. Divides each other. So this becomes ohm meter or ohm centimeter for that matter. Since conductivity is reciprocal of resistivity, so unit of conductivity is ohm inverse meter inverse. Now ohm inverse, the inverse of ohm is also written as m h o mo. So this is also called mo meter inverse. It's a very old unit, so it's mo meter inverse. Now mo is also called Siemens. S I E M E N S Siemens meter inverse. So wherever you see Siemens written, you have to understand it's a unit of uh, Siemens meter inverse. It's a unit of resistivity. Siemens itself is the unit of unit of something called conductance. Now what is conductance? Conductance is the reciprocal of resistance and the unit of conductance is Siemens or you can also write Siemens or Mo or you can also write Ohm inverse for that matter all right so just making you familiar with the different other terms also involved or that we use conductance is the reciprocal of resistance conductivity is the reciprocal of resistivity remember and these are the respective units Siemens is the unit of conductance Siemens meter inverse or Siemens centimeter inverse is the unit of conductivity thank you